Madness. It's all madness. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. This is another episode of Go BYO. Wyoming, go be Wyoming, go be Wyo, whatever. I'm your host, Aaron Gray. Zach, what's going on, man? Not much. Not much. Uh, Just another St. Patrick's Day. Yep, it is. Got my shamrock tie on. And Are we, um, I'm not woke, so like, is this going to be a, you know, a, oh God, it's a cultural know. appropriation? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Probably not. I mean, the way this country's treated the Irish in the past, I don't know why they'd start caring. Whoa, now. whoa, <laughs> whoa. It's only cultural appropriation if you're a person of color. So true. Anyways, um, <laughs> it's Wednesday, guys. Uh, March seventeenth, one day in of officially no mask mandate. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Um, so this is our uh, give no ground. This is your biweekly uh, production from us, uh, covering current events, local news, all that good stuff. Uh, first and foremost, give a shout out to our Cloud Peak sponsor, DYT Solutions. If you need a custom digital marketing solutions for your company or brand, go to their website, dytsolutionswy.com, or email them admin at designyourtech.com. Again, that's DYT Solutions. They've helped us with our, our logos, our merchandise uh, product photos and our website. So, uh, they've got a great team. What's, I think what COVID did for people like this is like they're remote. So they're all across the state of Wyoming. So okay. if you need it, like if you're listening to this in Casper, Douglas, whatever, they'll help you because yeah. it's all remote. So it's, um, and they've got a team all across the state. So, perfect. um, that's our cloud peak sponsor there. Um, also this big promo here, I started out with saying madness. This is madness. Anybody in the Sheridan area, you can try it in Cheyenne if you want, if anyone's listening in Cheyenne. Yeah. Um, go in to their tap rooms. You're going to be watching basketball. The March Madness is starting. Yep. The the tournament is starting, the NCAA tournament. You go in and say, hey, I heard Madness on the Go Be Wild podcast. You get half off your first beer. There we go. Bing, bang, boom. Awesome. Um, so anyway, so Zach, um, we've got a lot of state news. Mm-hmm. I didn't really find anything local news going on. Local, uh, I mean, we can give a shout out to the boys and girls basketball teams. Yes. Uh, third, yes. third place. Um, Coach Sullivan uh, took the girls to a third, third place victory uh, this past weekend, which is huge. Yep. Um, it's huge. I know, you know, third place is, you know, as as competitors <laughs> where we want to be first, right? Yes. But uh, that's progress considering oh, yeah. we haven't been in six years. So, yep. and I think the last time they went, it wasn't a first place win either. So, yep. um, yeah, huge, huge congrats to him. Shout out to him turning that, that, uh, program around, bringing that culture back. Um, there's, they, they're a young group. Yep. Uh, there was one senior. Um, and so they'll, I'm sure we'll see him again in the next couple of years. Yes. And I, I will say to give a pat on the back to him is, uh, I ran the off season workouts in the summer. And he had just got hired and he was there every day. And I can tell you there was, there was this energy out of him of one, they're young one. There's a new coach, Yep. you know, he's not from here, you know, and that was pretty laid out of, I don't care who you are. We're going to work. Yeah. And we'll go from there. And yep. it's in uh, and it, so it proved it's, I mean, shout out to him. He was there every day in the summer. Um, and shout out to the girls as well. Cause then they came out and they, they worked their tails off too. Yeah. Um, shout out to the boys, uh, coach Martini, um, not the way they would like to have gone out. Um, but I will congratulate, uh, Lech a lot. Yep. He's unanimous. It was unanimous that he was the four, a player of the year. Awesome. Um, and, uh, so the boys got third, you know, that's, uh, not how they wanted to end either, but, um, still pretty good year for them. Yep. Um, and we're looking, I'm looking forward to see where Lecklot goes and, yeah. um, he's going to have a, an interesting career in Bozeman. Yes. So I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing that. That'll be exciting. So yeah, shout out to those guys, um, and those programs and the athletes. Um, all right, Zach jumping in here, state, yeah. state stuff, a lot of state. I mean, I feel like we're one, we are the best in covering the, the state like bills, Senate bills. Well, I guess it's Senate file and then it's house bills, whatever, how you want to say it. But <laughs> anyways, um, I did get this email from PAW Petroleum Association of Wyoming and their stance on house bill 173. I don't think we covered this one. Mm. And Probably because it got proposed and then they've had, they haven't been in session the last couple of days due to the snowstorm they've got in Cheyenne. Yeah. Um, but House Bill 173 would be kind of like a cap tax. It'd be a, a one penny tax to sales tax. Um, and, you know, it was P 
PAW does a great job of like, well, it's touted as that one penny goes to education. However, the bill does not say that. And that's and so PAW is against House Bill 173 as it stands okay. right now, which, Zach, we've covered a lot of bills. That's exactly our anytime it comes up. It's like, OK, well, is it actually written in there that right. it goes to education? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it doesn't. Then why are we touting this as it goes to education? Because it doesn't. And right. that I mean, we're going to cover some of these, which same thing. It's like, don't lie to me like I can read yeah. it. Right. So don't don't use the fear of oh we're not going to get our education funded. Right. It's like no, like yeah, you know. And anytime someone's like no, we need to amend it. Like oh, you don't like education. It's like well, it doesn't say it goes to education. Right. You know. Let's make sure that it actually <laughs> says it's going to education. Which any educator out there, that's what you want. Right. Yeah. Don't get bought into this <laughs> lobbying group of like no, they hate educators. It's right. like. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> if anything, this th- that's what you want. Like, yeah. uh, anyways, but you know, I think one thing we've seen uh, just with this talk of you know education and the in the budget deficit, I don't think we see any uh, anybody on any side, political side, coming out like against teachers. Like, I think they they realize this is a problem, and they realize the the high standard that Wyoming puts on education. Yes. Yes. They're recognizing the problem now. How they're choosing to go about you know, solving this problem, that's where yep. we can debate this. But I don't think anybody can, you know, reasonably logically say that our legislators are against our teachers and against the education right. that's, that's uh, yep. given in this state. And like, I think you're on to something there in regards to, I've been thinking about this all week about you and I both last week were like, we are stoutly against income tax. However, we're in a situation that we have to, I mean, like, yeah. uh, you know, unless we come up with a different solution, right. You know, something's going to have to happen. Yeah. So we're, and we'll talk, we've got a lot of these here. So um, anyway, so that was from PAW. I just wanted to hit that off right out the bat. Hopefully Zach and I have been pretty consistent, which I think we have Yeah. on like, you know, make sure it's in there. Like make sure it actually says it goes to education. You know, don't, don't lie to me. Don't lie to the Wyoming people. Um, and then turn around and see like, oh, you guys hate education. Anyways, <laughs> right. uh, that's my soapbox. <laughs> Uh, An amendment, this was reported by Cowboy State Daily. An amendment was proposed, um, I believe, by Chuck Gray out of Cheyenne that would end the position of the public health officer. So unless I'm missing something, because he he claims, and the amendment does read that there's a director of health. So I'm sitting here like, wait a sec. So we have a director of health, and then we have a public health officer? Yeah. So... (laughs) And I want to know how much are those two people getting paid? Right. Like, <laughs> great. Yeah. Um, I this I'm in a weird spot on this because I do agree with Representative Larson. He comes out against this and says, "Hey, whoa, 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 we don't want to go down this road where we just start axing positions because we don't agree on how they went about their job." Right. And I agree with that. Yeah. However, I just started with wait a sec. We have a director of health and then a public health officer. Right. What's the difference? How are those two different? Exactly. Yeah. Which hopefully, like, I'd love to get Chuck Gray on and be like, is that what you're getting at? Like, right. <laughs> oh, we're paying for two positions? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which Chuck Gray seems like a smart guy. I have a feeling that's what it is. And that's where he's like, yeah, we should ax this. Yeah. Why in the world do we have a director of health and then we pay for another public health officer? Like, what? Right. Like, what's going on here? Yeah. I guess in his tweet, he says the actions of the state health officer and the governor's office. Uh, have been unconstitutional and wrong. So there, I think, is his motive uh, to sure. removing this position. But again, like you said, what's the difference? What's is yep? Where are where do they fall on the hierarchy? Yeah, and are they at the same position? Yep. Uh, like, is the director of health just in the health department, and then for whatever reason, the public health officer, I guess, is through the governor's office? Which then that's like that's my point. Like, why why do we have two of them then? Right. Like, what. Yeah, that's that's a good question. <laughs> Somebody let us know. I, I don't know, get it's it. It's confusing. <laughs> we don't have our wild whiskey yeah, yet. That's uh, an inside joke right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ill, uh, anyways, uh, but uh, all right. Next one. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add on that m- amendment. No, Zach. I mean it. It just. It, yeah, let's. I guess it's a good way to start the conversation. It's been voted down twice because of the. Uh, uh, Man, the state the state know, employees the, the lobby motive. is strong in the yeah, state, yeah. man. So 
I should just apply for state offices because apparently it's you can do whatever you want. Yes. <laughs> um, sorry, that's a shot at um, House Bill two hundred nine. Uh, that's the weed bill. Yeah, yeah. House House Bill two hundred nine. So that passed committee. Um, obviously, it was going to go to the House. Nothing's changed, obviously, because they're not right. debating anything. Um, yeah. Here's a question: Like, are they gonna like like snow days? Like, yeah. So do they add three days thing. on, or <laughs> yeah? So like school, they just get those three tacked on to the end. Probably not. Knowing knowing our end state of March legislators. is when they're they're supposed yeah. to be done, right? The end of March. So I mean, they were supposed to be done in February, constitutionally, well, yeah, right. as right. Senator Biden yeah. pointed out. But, um, huh. anyways. Um, <laughs> I'm on my soapbox a lot today. This drives me bonkers. The Wyoming state, the state, the official for the uh, Wyoming Transportation of uh, oh, Department of Transportation, sorry, YDOT. Yeah. Is quoted. Um, what's he quoted? Hold on. I got to read this because this. Is this about the airplanes? Yes. This drives me. Yeah. So uh, while you're finding it, I'll catch people up. So uh, a legislator, oh, Anthony Bouchard says yes. that we, we should sell the two jets that the state uses for transporting state employees. Um, so some people have pushed back. There's two luxury jets um, that are used. So to fly, you know, whether what Governor Gordon's got to go somewhere across the state or maybe he's going to meet with people in a different state, whatever it is. They're, these are used to move states, uh, these these people in the state and then, uh, uh, you know, other employees. Um, so Anthony Bouchard says they should be sold, uh, you know, to help pay for, uh, you know, things like, you know, help instead of raising taxes, right? Sell these two jets. Yep. Um, there's some people who say that this actually is saving money, uh, having these two jets. It's just having the option to fly saves them money instead of paying for fuel and, and, uh, you know, vehicles, a fleet of vehicles to carry a bunch of people having right. these two planes, uh, is cheaper for them. And they did a couple studies. I guess there was one in 2014, um, said the total cost to operate the two aircrafts was about 2.6 million. Um, and the current operating costs is, uh, currently is average to about two, 2.1 million a year. So, uh, as compared to, it was, did they put the numbers in for one, what it would be if they didn't have the planes? No. Um, and I'd it says I'd it's like 32% more efficient than fractional aircraft. Well, I can say I'm 54, 54% more efficient if you're not providing me the whole thing. Right. <laughs> so I guess, yeah. Tell us what the, the, yeah. the, the cost would be to tra transport people. And I guess you'd have to come up with an estimate, but I guess they also like lease these because it says we uh when an agency uses so the state owns these two planes sure like they're the state has bought them outright right um so that they have that fixed cost they're not still paying for the planes they're paying for fuel and then yeah the but they charge the an pilot. agency yeah. who uses the aircraft uh, about a thousand fourteen hundred dollars an hour so whoever's the agency using it charge so agency, like a state agency would be charged $1,400 an hour to fly across the state. So that money's just going back to the state. It's just state money going back into the state coffers. Is that what that means? Hey, real quick, we're <laughs> going to we're gonna make our own economy <laughs> with taxpayer money. Um, okay. <laughs> They'll never know. <laughs> Zach, here's my, here, like, not, not to lie. They're probably right. It's probably more efficient to have a plane in case there is state travel. Yeah. I'm not going to argue that. It is probably more efficient to fly. Yeah. Okay. Do not freaking scold me over 500 grand. Oh, well, we did a report in 2014 and, you know, per average, it should cost us 2.6 million, but actually it only costs us two. That's still <laughs> too much. Yeah. And then, oh, you're charging 1400 bucks for someone else to use it per yeah. hour? Right. <laughs> I think the YDOP, people representatives like missed this here yeah um yeah so what's more important why dot your two jets or keeping our roads safe right to me it's keeping our roads safe yeah i could give a, a flying beep about <laughs> your guys's private jet yeah 
Right. And if you, you guys abs- probably shouldn't be flying in private jets, then we're in a budget deficit. Sorry, just because you're the governor, right, doesn't mean you just get to fly in a private jet all the time, right? Yeah. It, am, am I wrong? Like, am no. I am I missing something? I mean, if it absolutely saves more money, sell one of the planes and use one of them. Right. Right. Why do we need two? That's that's what I thought after reading this. And one. also, the study was done in fourteen, so it's like that's that's a yeah. dated study. Yeah. And like you said, Seven I want to like show me the numbers of the efficient, like how much cheaper it is. Right. I don't know. These, some of these guys in, in high positions are so elitist. No, we need to keep our planes. We need right. to keep our private jets. Yep. You can't take those from me. <laughs> it did get me thinking, though, like how... Uh, I was just thinking, I was like, well, how did I think they got places before? I guess I did picture them just driving, getting in their car and driving. Oh, because that's what the peons do, Zach. All right. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I mean, like... How many how many people do you know that own a private jet? Well, right, but I'm thinking like state. You know, if the governor's <laughs> got to go somewhere, if the governor's coming up here, you know, is he is he driving up here, or you know, does it make more sense for him to fly? I mean, I don't know. Well, and I think that's the that's the discussion, right? <laughs> oh, safety. He needs to be on his own private jet. Yeah, really. He's the governor of Wyoming. He's out there like, trying to hurt the yeah. governor. <laughs> yeah, of Wyoming, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we could bring this debate to like Air Force One because I bet that costs billions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and there's Air Force One and Air Force Two. Yeah, and there's multiple planes. Yep. So I mean, but now we're getting to the weeds of like right. <laughs> just big government in general. So, but anyways, I don't know. Somebody hit us up. I don't know. Are we wrong? Like, I don't know. God, that'd be like four shots right there. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, my I guess my biggest thing is. I'm really getting pissed off with state officials scolding us. Like we save you 500 grand. So we're going to keep our two private jets. Yeah. It's like, do you say, do you, do you not hear how ridiculous you sound? Right. And then especially you guys are like, we need money so we can fix your roads. Well, here's an idea. You have $2 million sitting in assets in these private planes. Yeah. There you go. Boom! Right there. You just got $2 million. That's two years for the education budget. That's well, more yeah. than two years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Or that pays for some of your white employees. Right. But I guess your travel is more important on these private jets. Yeah. When's the last time the governor has left Cheyenne? Like to come visit a different part of the, the state? Well, in 2020, never. Right. Because we've been on quarantine. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. What have they used the jets for this last when, year? What have they used them for? When? Yeah. Why Why is a state <laughs> agency I love this. getting to use the jet to fly across the state to do some state business? And I wonder, state. has anyone done like an audit? Like, have you guys flown out of the state? Yeah. And for what reason? Right. Yeah. Because I'm trying to picture, if you're flying from Cheyenne to Casper, why? Yes. If, you, if you're flying from Cheyenne to Sheridan, okay. Yes. Yeah, you'll save time. If you're flying from yep. Cheyenne to, to Cody, okay. Or maybe over to Riverton, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you need a plane. You need a private plane, though, for those three flights a, that you're going to make? A, a private jet. Right. Because yeah. look, you can get a prop plane and charter it. I guess, yeah. And they're just as nice. Yeah. Yeah. The whole, the whole. Uh, sometimes they're a little off base, but Turning Point USA, they are straight up big government sucks. This yeah. is why. Because I bet some of you out there are like, what? They've got two private jets? Yeah. Yeah. The state has had two private jets since 14. Right. Yeah. Probably before. That's the third study they've conducted. And so. guess what? Now we can't pay education. Right. Something's wrong here. Yep. (laughs) If you don't understand that, then I guess. I'm going to back up because I just realized what I said about the planes and and education. Education is 300 million. Yeah. Sometimes I have trouble with zeros. (laughs) You're a social (laughs) studies teacher. (laughs) (laughs) That's all right. Two million is not going to pay for two years of of education. But But hey, it's a start. (laughs) Two million would pay for, I mean, how many teachers? Right. Right. That's all. Okay. We'll move on. Um, (laughs) All right. Some Senate bills, Senate files, sorry. Uh, Zach, I don't like this one. I don't either. And I want your take on it. Senate file 139. So it was proposed by Senator Affy Ellis, um, and I've liked a lot of her stuff. This one, I just don't agree. I I think, again, this is that slippery slope of like, hey, I get what you're trying to do, but this is too... This Again, we talked about this last week about conservatives, right? Yeah. A conservative is... We don't propose, like, if anything, it should be like Chuck Gray, like amending things to take stuff out. Sure. Um, anyways, that's a whole philosophical thing. But right. So Senate file 139 would be, uh, 
a school board appointee, so anybody that becomes appointed to a school board um, has to announce their a political affiliation, their party. Yeah. Um, you know, so this, you know, if the, if I was running for school board, you know, I I'd say what party I align with in my campaign right. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every time you're quoted in the newspaper, there's your yep. Your there's your R or D. You. Yep. Or yeah. Libertarian. You know, whatever. Right. Uh, Green Party. Um, yeah, I don't like this because it's I like it's, when when does it stop then? What when 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 you become a teachers act now you have to tell them hey this is how I align politically right. right. Do we not see how yeah. that goes down a slippery road? Yeah. Like, um, no, you're, you're right. And I think, uh, Affy says here, you know, uh, sorry, it would help. No, you're good. It would help, uh, voters decide who to cast their ballot for in the school board races. If you are voting, I we talked about this during election time. If you're just blindly voting all Republican, all right, like you're not, you're not exercising your right to vote. Yes. Right? Yeah, we talked about this in August. Yeah. yeah. Do your due diligence. Go figure out who has the best positions, regardless mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. side they align to, and then vote for that person. Yep. Um, you know, I wish there was a better job. I mean, it was hard this year with COVID and stuff, but there was a better effort to, to allow all of these local positions, whether it's the Sheridan Community Land Trust or uh, uh, the, the college board or, or even the school board, to allow them to just a couple questions so that they can put out some of their ideas or maybe yes. just put out their own philosophy about what their, their job is and what they should be doing Yep, and allow people to, to vote based off of that. Um, yeah, I agree. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want more people. I see this as an attempt to get more people to go out and vote and so that they can vote, you know, Republican, Republican or vote Democrat. Yes. Um, and, and it, and I, so, let me agree with her in regards to, she said, it's hard to find out where they are on topics. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think the solution is just saying what a party you align with, because right. that doesn't really tell me anything. And um, my thought was, remember, now COVID was a weird year, so everything was weird. But realistically, Zach, one of the reasons why we started this show is, as young people were like, Hey, I want to know how, what does Biteman feel about, yeah. uh, conservation or what does Cyrus Western feel about education? Yeah. One, some of that stuff's not out there and sure they might've had a forum, but then it's gone. Um, and then two, I'll say, and bless the people that try and try and run those things. They're not good questions right. and they don't do a question and answer. Yeah. And it's like, that's the problem. So if anything, it's like you need to get people more involved, like what we're doing, have people on and be like, hey, I'm going to ask you a tough question. Yeah. You know, and um, I guess if you don't want to come on, then you don't come on. But then I, if, if anything, that tells you where they are. If, right. To be honest with you. So yeah. um, I, I like I, like I see where she's going with it, but it's like that's the wrong that's the wrong solution. Right. Um, and I think another thing when you put this this. Uh, political affiliation in there. Yeah. It changes so dangerous, the, man. The concept of uh, this nonpartisan group. Yes. Before you go in, these board members who are deciding and working together on what to do mm -hmm. have laid their politics at the door. Their job is to be there for education for kids to further and advance education. Correct. When you start introducing uh, these the political party. lines, the party, right? That's yep. when the divisions start. And yep. that's when it starts being com becoming harder to. It becomes more about the politics than it does about the education. Yes. The thing that you you have been voted in to do. Right on. Um, and yes. I think that's, I th that's how this is supposed to be. That's why it's a nonpartisan <laughs> yes. thing. Hey, this, and, you know, so I think that's all we need to say. I think, uh, I think, uh, if, if you don't agree, let us know, let us know your thoughts. But, um, yeah, I think you and I are on the same page there. I think that's, that's the wrong way to go for what she's trying to accomplish. Um, so anyways, uh, before we go to 137, I want to give a shout out to Jess Hattervig at ERA Care Realty up here in northeastern Wyoming. You cannot find a house. You can't find a lot. can't find a builder unless you've got an expert realtor working for you. If you are, I've 
Zach, we've mentioned this before. People have reached out to us and like, hey, we love your show because we're looking to move to Wyoming. Well, you got better. You better get yourself a realtor. Yep. Uh, give Jess a call at 307-751-6924. He doesn't just work Sheridan. He works like all Sheridan County, Dayton, Ranchester. He's even done some little bit of Buffalo. So that's Johnson County. Um, so give him a call, 307-751-6924. Again, that's Jess Hattervig at ERA Carroll Realty. Um, all right. Another Senate bill here, Zach. Uh, Senate file 137. This was proposed by uh, Dave Kinski. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This past committee, <laughs> four to one. Um, pretty much this is, uh, I don't know how to put, how to put this. Uh, I think this is the state finally protecting your constitutional rights in weighing, putting their weight on the universities and the junior colleges before it even gets an issue here, you know, some other states are seeing this problem. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I want this to pass. And what it does is it allows the state to override the universities and say, no, this is the Second Amendment. This is how it lines. You don't get to impose your own rules. Yeah. And I love it because that's, that's how it should be. That, um, yeah, uh, you're right. I think... So this bill is is seeking to limit the the regulations that the university and the the state junior, or the uh, junior, junior colleges, colleges yep. can put on firearms. Yes, um, I think that's that's a good thing. I mean, it's this is making it uniform across the board. Um, so wherever you're at, the rules are the same. They still they, they yep. apply the same way. And that's important because if you go to school at Sheridan College and it's different, and yeah. then you go to UW. And then it's com like, say right. it's a complete 180. It's like, that's not really your fault. You right. know, like, yeah. And let's be honest, that's the typical path of somebody who's going to Sheridan yes. college. They go to Sharon college for two years, save some money, go down to Laramie. Uh, you go to the, the college and uh, it's in Powell, right? Yep. You go there for two years. You, you typically end up in Wyoming, maybe unless you're, you know, your, yeah. your associates is what you want to do. But if you're on a four year course and you start out one of these junior colleges, you're probably going to UW. Yes. Um, yeah. So why not make the rules the same all across the board so that when you find you finish your degree in, in the place that you are most likely going to go, it's it's the same there, too. Yep. Uh, I mean, just think about logistics, uh, too. I mean, for students, we just talked about that, but for law enforcement as well. I mean, people just moving across the state, knowing what the, the laws are there mm -hmm. uh, is is going to help those law enforcement officers, yep. too. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think. Um, shout out to represent or Senator Kinski. Sorry, he's a Senator. Yep. Um, yeah, no, I love it. Um, I think we're being proactive too. Like I said, some other States are kind of seeing some issues where the university imposes, you know, a rule and then the state kind of doesn't know how to go about it. Yeah. Um, I think this is the proactive step where the state correctly puts some political weight on the university and says, no, Yep. this is a constitutional right. Bing, bang, boom, we're done here. Yeah. Um. <laughs> there's, yeah. There's an uh, additional bill or an accompanying bill, um, Senate File 67, which is going looks to eliminate gun-free zones yeah. um, around the state. So not just at Ooh. a university, but around the state. Yes, sir. Um, that won't pass because then that would mean schools. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. So Kinski says he doesn't expect Senate file 137, which we just talked about making the, the rules uniform for the universities and colleges. Uh, he doesn't expect any problems with that unless 67 gets killed. So that's the one seeking to eliminate. Uh, mm. So Senate one file 137, he says, is meant to back up Senate file 67. Oh. So. Well, I mean, see. I'd like to see that go through, but. Yeah. That is the big we'll trick. See. It'll the probably big... get amended for, for something, but yeah, we'll see. But I like that uh, pro pro Second Amendment legislation. Yes, sir. Give no ground. It's my gun, man. Absolutely. Um, here's another. This one's great. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see this light off. Battle Royale <laughs> right here. Yeah. Um, where do you line? Are you a conservationist or are you a fiscal conservative? Um, there's a bill that is being proposed about Hey, guess what? The state has a lot of state land. Let's sell it. Make some money. Yeah. Um, what's interesting is this article in Cowboy State Daily is that it, this land being discussed is in Teton County, right? So, yeah. um, I don't know. This it, it, it this puts a, a lot of people in a different spot, you know, like how they feel about certain things. Um, 
my problem is I don't like the idea in sake of we're in a budget deficit, so we need to make money. Don't like that at all. Yeah. Um, there's a reason why the state of Wyoming set up their school sections is what they're called throughout the state. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't, you know, the founders probably would not agree of like sell them off. You know, you never sell, you know, one of the cowboy ethics is it's not for sale. Yeah. Um, that's how I feel about this. Cause it feels like it, this is a, this is a reaction reactionary thing in involving, we have a budget deficit. We have a lot of state land. Let's just sell it. Yeah. Well, that's not really fixing our problem, right? Our, our problem is spending and revenue. Yeah. Okay. That would be a short term fix, but that's not really solving our problem. Um, right. It's not a sustainable source yep. of income. Exactly. Because what are we going to do next time? Yep. Just sell off some more land. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not sustainable. Uh, it's not this, you know, we've been talking about uh, diversifying the economy, right? That's how we're going to get sustainable income into mm -hmm. the state. Mm -hmm. Just selling off land every time we're in trouble isn't, isn't sustainable. Yep. Now, um, we could look at Texas because Texas doesn't have a lot of state land. Like we're about the complete opposite. So, you know, someone could argue like, well, I mean, look at Texas, they run it just, you know, they're running yeah. just fine. But um, yeah, I think it, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I, I don't see this going um, because the only solution I would have is a bill that Senator Biteman proposed two years ago, which was it wouldn't be selling land. It'd be an equal trade. So if you had 40 acres, Zach, and you wanted to switch some state, so say some like landlocked state section, yeah, and you wanted to switch and it'd be exact 40, 40, you know, that's where it's not value. It's, it's 40, 40. Yep. I, I think his bill may have had some value as well. Right. But it was mostly a, a straight trade. Um, yeah. And for whatever reason that didn't get passed because people thought it was this, that we were selling off land. And it's yeah. like, no, we're, if someone wants to propose to the state, Hey, I want right. to give you a hundred for your hundred. Yeah. You know um, anyways, but that's um, so this is not that this is like straight, just selling off. State right. land. <laughs> um, but uh, that's about it for the state news. Zach, do you want to hit uh, another one of our sponsors? And then you and I have some really good um, give no ground uh Soapbox, I guess we want yeah. to get on. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, one of our sponsors today is Sheridan County Title. They offer better service for a better price. Ask for the best title service that has been serving Sheridan for over 50 years. Give them a call at 307 672 6478 or uh, stop by their office on downtown Main Street. Wonderful. All right. Okay. If you don't want, um, this is full opinion right here for everybody out there. So if you don't want to listen, leave now. Um, go to Black Tooth, use Madness, get half off your beer, and I'm none the wiser. <laughs> okay. Um, Zach, I'm going to call this. Well, no, let's go carbon capture first. Carbon capture. All right. Um, so bless their hearts. Um, Wyoming Public Radio, they have a new series out called Carbon Valley. Um, and they are diving deep into carbon capture, right? The state has invested a lot of money into it um, over in Gillette. Um, we've gotten a lot of federal subsidies. You know, the governor's done a lot, of, a lot of work to make sure that's protected under this Biden administration, I'll say. Yep. Um, I want to remind everybody, we've talked to Mike and Marin Bingle Davis, who are geologists, and we talked about this topic of carbon capture. Carbon capture is exactly what it sounds like. Okay, we're capturing it. Okay, yeah. we're capturing the natural gas. Okay. Other than that, it doesn't really solve any problem in regards to we're still going to use it later. Yeah. So, and we've said this numerous times about the governor, like, hey, that's great. You know, like you're protecting carbon capture. That's because we've invested a lot of state money into it. Right. Okay. You know, that's your golden goose. Like if it fails, then yeah, the state's out a lot of money. Um. The problem is, and we've said this about Governor Gordon, like I'd like him to be more aggressive in regards to um, the use of natural gas, the use of coal in, yeah. in energy. Um, and really the whole state of Wyoming needs to be, but that we can, I mean, um, so 
full disclosure, haven't listened to the first episode yet. It came out today, I think, or yesterday. Okay. Um, I, I, anyways, I just wanted to, I'm, I guess I'm a little more reserved than I thought I was going to be, <laughs> Zach, about this. But um, keep that in mind, I think, when you listen to that series from Wyoming Public Radio. Right. Well, in the teaser that they released, uh, it was a couple of days ago. Yeah. They call it, they call carbon capture this kind of silver bullet, you know, this, uh, the savior. Right. Yeah. And well, and not, not savior. They think of it. It's more of like, uh, we're hanging our hat on something that isn't going to hold our, you know, isn't going to hold it. Yeah. Um, yep. And I think that's where you and I are like, I don't, I don't, we, we don't see it that way. Yeah. We, we definitely see this as a way to, Number one, circumvent Biden administration blocks on, you know, coal mining and stuff like that. Yep. Um, but number two, it's a way to continue jobs in this sector of, of you know, natural gas and uh, coal and minerals uh, to be able to not only produce coal in a, in a maybe more efficient way or capturing the carbon out of the air, you know, and, yep. and uh, using it for energy purposes that way, but also the other applications that come from, from this carbon. Yes. Uh, you know, looking at carbon fiber and, and building things with that or whatever there are, there are. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you and I see this as a really positive way of, of number one, diversing Wy- Wyoming's economy and getting us off of the the mining of coal, but still producing, you know, coal, coal products or carbon yes. products. Yep. Um, and so I think, I think characterizing this as a silver bullet, you know, as, as this kind of mythical sort of thing that mm-hmm. isn't going to save us in the long run. I mean, sure. Maybe it's not, not going to save us, but I think there's more to it. There is a lot more to be said, about it, then they're going to, then they're giving credit to you right now. Yeah. Um, and again, we, the episode is just, has just released. Yeah. And we haven't listened to it yet. And we're going to go more in depth on, on, yep, on, this, on Friday over but, the weekend. Um, and it does, it, it'll go into what's called the X prize is what it's called. So it's a competition of these, I don't want to call them so called cause some of them might be, but these guys are trying to come up with new solutions or new ideas of carbon capture. Yeah. Okay, cool you know, Ramico's here doing it. Yeah. So I don't like, what's the point of this competition? Right. Um, and to me, it's just they're They want to control the narrative. And that's, and that's what I mean. Like when I bash the governor on, like you need to take a stance of natural gas is, is the cheapest and cleanest way of energy. Yeah. Coal is the second cleanest behind that. And then we can talk about everything else. And that's a fact. Like, yeah. and he needs to he needs to take a stand and do that, but he won't. Um, and I, you know, apparently no one else in the media will do that um, in Wyoming. I guess I should say. You know, I I don't know. I did want to say I was watching a show the other day. I think it was on Hulu or on Netflix. It wasn't Netflix because it was an advertisement in the middle of the show. But I was watching a show, and this advertisement comes on, and it's a very pro natural gas, pro oil, pro coal. Uh, advertisement. Sure. It shows it's about this family. They're coming out and they're getting ready to put the kids on the school bus. And as the school bus pulls up, the school bus disappears. And they're like, you know, this is what happens when we, uh, when, and it was more, I think, aimed at the Biden administration and, and banning these leases and, and permits. Sure. But it says this is what happens when, when you shut off this part of the economy. Mm-hmm. States who rely on that income and that revenue are forced to make decisions like this you know, decisions that impact education. Um, and it was really interesting. I've never seen an ad like that before. Yeah. And maybe unless it's around uh, political, you know, it's an election year and it's getting closer to the election. Yep. Yep. Never seen an ad like that before. And it was powerful. I think exactly like you said, standing up and creating more, whatever lobbying groups there are out there creating these advertisements like this, it was accurate and it was effective. I think. Yes. Well, and that's, um, We'll see how this goes. You know, I, it's um, because what's funny is you said it's mostly around political time, you know, of yeah. running and it shouldn't be political. Right. Um, you know, I joked with you and we had negative 30 degree weather. That's not should be a political issue. It's sh- right. that, you know, it's uh, it's a it's an economic issue. Yeah. Okay? And, and the government should stay out of it. You know, it's it should be. It should be competitive and it should be cheap and it should be reliable, right? Yep. That's all that, that's all that consumers care about. Yeah. The government should have no say in that whatsoever. Right. Um, yep. 
And if you're so concerned about the environment, you can make the decision to go go yep. green. Don't that's don't, on you. Don't wear your North Face. Um, make sure you don't have any plastics on. Yep. Um, you know, make sure your electricity you get for your electric car is not coming from coal or natural gas. Yep. Um, make sure your solar panels and your wind turbines aren't made from coal, right. um, which would be hard to do, by the way. I don't know if you could ever find one of those. Um, you know, your house, you know, I mean, we can keep going on and on yeah. and on and on. Yeah. on. So, um, you know, that's in a, this leads me into this, Zach, because we'll dive deep into this, the carbon capture thing more. This dives me into my question of when are we going to, when are people going to stand up and just say, just leave me alone yeah. to the government. Yeah. Just leave me alone. I just want to work. Right. And whatever that is, I don't care what it is. Yeah. Are we going to get there? Like what, like where, do, where is people go, like, um, you know, uh, I pulled some of these, political campaign quotes, which is pretty interesting because one's John Kerry yeah, and one's John Fremont. <laughs> John Fremont. Um, John Kerry's campaign slogan was, let America be America again. Yeah. I think that's so true. Yeah. Just leave us alone. Right. Just leave us alone. I don't care. Right. <laughs> let me, let me, and then John Fremont's, which this is super old, but Yes, I was now this one's, this one's free soil party. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. Um, this one's deep though because someone's going to, Someone's going to hear one of these parts and be like, oh, but yeah. so it's free soil, free labor, free speech, free men. Okay. Now, so I know someone's sitting there <laughs> like, ah, free labor, communism. Right. No, 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 no. What he's saying is <laughs> you have the freedom to choose what labor you want to do. Yes. And if that's hard for you to understand, then you wouldn't have got along yeah. with John Fremont. Right. But um, yeah, go do some researching on that quote if you're, if you're confused, because he was absolutely not a communist. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. If you're confused at all about that, like go, just go research the free soil party. And, and I mean, it has to do with the expansion of slavery. A lot is a lot of it and moving into Kansas and Nebraska. Anyway, yes. Going off in the, the history deep end, but yeah, no, like that's it. a great, no, it's a great quote though. Uh, free soil being able to, to one have just the soil where it's free, not like free. I didn't have to pay for it. Free because I am free to be myself here. I'm I can free. I can do whatever I yeah, want. Liberty. Yes. Um, free labor. I can choose to do what I want with this land. Yep. Free speech. I can say what I want here. And free men. I am free. Yep. I am free. Regardless of who I am, I am free. Yep. And that's those two things. I think people probably won't like the John Kerry one because that sounds kind of like mag maga, you know. Yeah. But um, I'm dead serious, Zach. Like we're like. And maybe this is us. This is we we need to tell young people like go look at John Fremont and in, in in research what that means to you. Um, because that's important. Like yeah. um I want I want a space where people can feel comfortable to say whatever they want, that they want to do whatever job that they want, um, and they can do it wherever they want, right? That's the free soil part, or own any property that you want, um, which leads to you're a free man. Right. Um, yeah, research that. If that doesn't make sense to you, you need to go dig into that, especially the era he's coming out of, you know? You're right. Um, and then really, I think I, I'm, I'm just digging this. Let Amer like, I want to change this because John Kerry would never say this, but let America be America again. Right. <laughs> like that, like seriously, like yeah. just leave me alone. Right. I want to go drill a natural gas well as a company. I can do that. Yep. What's stopping me? You know, um, anyways, um, yeah, I agree. And I, I had some other stuff in here about energy and blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, it's, I'm dead serious, Zach. And it's scary that it's happening here in Wyoming. Cause like, you know, people are not paying attention and it's like, like the, the whole white dot thing, like, do you, they, you know, if you're surprised that they own two jets it's like well you're surprised like us you know like that's I don't, that should freak you out like yeah. we we have a k-12 system that is not funded but our y dot is defending itself for having two private jets yeah that should piss you off that should piss the people off to where they're calling the governor and saying you need to figure something out you need to be a leader give no ground make the government smaller fund our education because yeah. what's most important safe roads, 
education. Okay, and then we'll go from there. Yep. Um, but no yep. one cares. No one cares. Right. No one cares. And I and I shouldn't say that. No one doesn't. You know, you knuckleheads. <laughs> um, you Wyoming knuckleheads. No one cares. Um, anyways, that's my soapbox, I guess. No, you're right. I, I think people wonder, well, what can I do? Um, and we told you. You yeah. can call. You can make your voice heard. Um, and at the end of the day, if they don't listen, then they don't listen. Yep. We have a, a you know... We have a different conversation of what happens when they don't listen to our requests. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think instead of me complaining and like, I'm pretty much sound like the governor there giving his knucklehead thing <laughs> is, is number one, be educated on the issues, right? Get yeah. all this stuff's free information. Yep. Um, the Wyoming legislator has Wyoming legislature has a YouTube channel. Anytime they're on it's live. So you can go watch. Uh, Cowboy State Daily is free. They send out all this stuff. Uh, yep. And they have really, a great actually, newsletter every day. Any, any, it, it, like Cowboy State Daily, Wild File, we've had. Um, obviously, the local stuff, you know, mm-hmm. shared in press, shared in media, they report on stuff. Um, that's all free. Get on there. Go look. Um, and then, second is call your representatives. You know, we've had, we've, and senators, we've had Western on, we've had Biteman, we've had Kenner, um, we've reached out to Kinski numerous times. Um, you know, we've had the mayors on here, um, reach out to them. They're accessible. Talk to them. And then, you know, if that doesn't work, you know, free freedom of speech. Yep. You need to have these conversations. Um, so anyways, yeah, I'll leave the Colorado energy transition stuff for next time. Suckers. Um, <laughs> let's see. We got to mention, uh, to finish out here, Zach, uh, our last, let's see. Yeah. Our last sponsor here, uh, alpha graphics Sheridan. Uh, they're on North main. They can help you with any, uh, printing needs for your business. Uh, they can do full, full printing, color printing. They can also help you with web design, social media marketing, um, and anything else that you may need give them a call 307-674-6277. Um, I was talking to somebody, so this will be a great little, like, they were super pumped working with alpha graphics because it's all in house. Yeah. Um, he's like, I don't have to go anywhere else in town. He's like, they'll have my cards. They'll have my flyers. They'll have my, um, they do like he, his business does like promos and stuff Uh like table stuff, banners. He's like, it's all there. He's like, I don't have to worry about anything else. I don't have to contact anybody else. They will have it. So if you're looking for that, give alpha graphics a call again, that's 307-674-6277. Um, and again, this is madness. Madness from Go BYO. Madness. Get half off at Black Tooth. Yep. Your first hey, I should say first beer. Not, first beer. Yeah. Someone was like, oh, the whole ticket. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, hold up. Uh, they're not paying us money for that. So yeah. uh <laughs> um, but um Zach, this was a good one. I think uh we hit some good topics. Yeah. Um, we'll have a good one Friday coming up. But uh thanks for you knuckleheads. Yeah. I need to say that more. I think that's maybe that's one like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There we go. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Um, Anything else to end out there, Zach? No, it's going to be a nice weekend. Get out and enjoy it. Well, I think Sunday it's supposed to rain, but uh, that's okay. It'll be warm though. Friday. Yeah. Friday and Saturday are going to be awesome. Go out, go out and enjoy life. Uh, Enjoy not having to wear a mask. Uh, Go visit some restaurants. They're going to be pumped, uh, you know, to to be able to go back. I think it's because it's full capacity, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Back to full capacity. They they have some recommended guidelines, but that's up to the business, which yep. that's how it should have been from the beginning. Right. Yeah. Yep. Go, go and go party. Go yes. Celebrate. Yes. Um, I would say burn your mask, but <laughs> I have a, I don't know. We'll wait until yeah. we'll wait to yeah. do that. Um, I still have to wear mine at the school. Yes. So. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, Cause one, Support those businesses, um, especially um, uh, one thing I like to reiterate, reiterate on is if you've got kids in athletics, things that the businesses that help support those athletics are your restaurants and your stores. Yep. Go support them because they support you. Yeah. Two, you live in the best state in the United States. We've got all this parks and rec. Go do it. Go outside. Yeah. Go. I mean, you weren't hopefully wearing a mask if you weren't around anybody, but go enjoy the outdoors. It's starting to get nice out here in Northern Wyoming. Yep. Um, if you're a big, like snowmobiler or skier, you're having a fun time yeah. in the South. <laughs> um, and yeah, absolutely. Like we joke with the black tooth thing, but seriously go support them, yep. you know, go uh, to any brewery, any bar, any restaurant, 
um, and stores to go buy, go buy locally. Um, always a big component of that. So, yeah. um, no great thing to end on there, Zach. And, uh, remember to you knuckleheads go BYO.